I love a spoiler, honestly. There was a point early on in the pandemic that I really, really enjoyed watching Drag Race to the point of like going on Reddit and seeing the mega list of the post-show Instagram photo shoots, the behind the scenes drama, all of it. Uh, but the best part was the spoilers. It's wild in that fandom. People have color-coded Google Docs and spreadsheets. They're doing data triangulation between social media and local bar performances and alleged insider scoops. Like there's real work going into this, you know? Uh, uh, Sorry, what was the question? What are knowledge communities, right? So yeah, the Drag Race spoiler community on Reddit is a good example of a knowledge community. It has it all. Emotional investment, intellectual effort, people come and go on their own, put in a ton of work on their own, right? Nobody's getting paid. It's just the collective social energy that keeps it running. And because it's so open and not hierarchical, it's really unpredictable, which is half the fun, honestly. Uh, knowledge about the next episode or even the finale could come from anywhere. How does this relate to public health? You know what, let me fix that question. How do knowledge communities relate to public health communication? What a great question. So public health communication usually works under an expert model, right? Take uh, Dr. Fauci's prominence during the pandemic as an example. The underlying logic is that an expert has knowledge that other people need, and it's that expert's job to get that knowledge out to people. The pandemic showed us the pros and cons of that approach. Like on the one hand, if you need help, it can be good to know that there is a person to turn to. And we know things like debunking and pre-bunking work uh, to counter health misinformation and experts can be good at that kind of work. On the other hand, it's pretty hard these days for a small number of experts to stand out in a super crowded media environment. Even if they do stand out, the positive effect of correcting misinformation can be short-lived. Building knowledge communities or integrating into knowledge communities could be one way to balance this out. So we don't have to just depend on trying to draw attention to a small number of experts every hour of every day against millions of other voices. We can rely on the strengths of the communities to inform each other. What are the strengths of knowledge communities? Uh, first of all, I don't like this background. Could I get a less annoying one? Uh, you know what? Maybe a more annoying one. Yeah, okay. There we go. So knowledge communities' strengths come from how open and accessible they are. Where experts have a depth of knowledge on narrow topics, knowledge communities have a wide breadth of knowledge. Where experts are limited by time and space, because they're, you know, individual humans, knowledge communities can distribute work across time and space, especially online, because they are networks. Where experts may fall victim to a lack of diverse perspectives, knowledge communities can draw on a wide variety of lived experiences. What are the pitfalls of knowledge communities? So this is where the Reddit example is helpful. I mentioned before that there's a lot of emotional investment in some fandom spaces, and I think it's fair to say that sometimes this emotional investment can go too far. And in a broader environment of cyberbullying, we can see this spill out into online harassment, intense arguments, and whole circles of community drama and not in a fun way. And this can take on an extra layer of harm when it reflects a broader environment of racism, transphobia, etc. You might have been waiting for this one. <laughs> Knowledge communities are vulnerable to spirals of misinformation. Uh, this isn't just relevant for reality TV spoilers, but you might remember this similar kind of thing happening throughout the pandemic and today. And the stakes are low when it comes to spoiling episodes of reality TV, but these dynamics are concerning when we think of the ways that health misinformation can thrive online and send people spiraling down a rabbit hole that a trusted expert could help pull them out of. How can public health embrace knowledge communities? So one approach to blending expert models and knowledge communities is through community-based participatory research or CBPR. In CBPR, community members facing a health issue work with scientists studying it. An example of CBPR is the Hermosa study at UC Berkeley. Their researchers worked with teenagers in Salinas, California to measure teenage girls' exposure to hormone disruptors in personal care products. It not only led to important scientific findings, but as partnering students described it, the project also helped provide them with the tools and platform to become local leaders in environmental health. And let's do one more take just to have another option and maybe we can zoom in for this one. Sorry, zoom in for this one. There we go. Projects addressing recent viral outbreaks show an emerging approach that doesn't draw a sharp line between scientists and communities. 
the Patient-Led Research Collaborative is a network of patient researchers working to promote and fund biomedical research into long COVID that patients themselves want to see. Respond MI is a LGBTQ plus community-led survey of MPOC symptoms and networks in New York City. Both projects are models for how to contribute to scientific knowledge, community solidarity, and self-determination through socially responsive research. And importantly, one reason this works is because these groups embrace the fact that researchers are already part of communities impacted by public health issues. The fact that scientists are socially and emotionally invested in the topics is a strength under this emerging model. Knowledge communities are open, non-hierarchical, and a bit unpredictable. Their membership is in flux and their conversations are hard to follow as an outsider. This might sound scary to public health professionals who are used to thinking about flows of information out from experts, um, but it's important to Keep in mind that this isn't a call to abandon the expert model completely, but rather a call to embrace complementary approaches too. The future is unpredictable, but we know to expect more public health emergencies like the pandemic. We need to act now to develop models of communication and engagement flexible enough to respond to the unknown.